Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be exporting the game to a JAR file. So this is a bit more of a Java tutorial rather than an OpenGL one, but it's still one of the most common topics that I get asked about and I didn't really have enough time this week to cover a larger topic, so I thought that this would be quite a good thing to show for this week. Unfortunately, exporting a project to a JAR file isn't as easy as you might think it should be, and we're actually going to have to change some stuff in the code to get this to work. The main problem that we're going to have is with loading resources, and that's because if we want to store our resources in the jar file, they'll no longer actually be files, and so we can't use Java's file object to load them up. However, if the resources aren't stored in the jar file, then we can still use the file objects in the code, so we're going to try this first, and then we'll do it with the resources stored inside the jar file later. When we've exported the game to a jar file, it will be searching for the resources in the same directory as the one that the jar file is in, so we just need to remember to put the res folder into the same folder as the jar file, and it should be able to find them without a problem. We'd also have to do a similar thing with shader files, but for the shaders, we're probably going to want to have these inside the jar file with the rest of the code, so in the shader program class, we're now going to alter the code slightly so that it can actually load resources from inside the jar file. To do this, we're going to use an input stream reader rather than a file reader, and this needs to take in an input stream. So we now just need to get our resource as an input stream, and we can do this by calling class.class.getResource as stream, and then we need to put in the file path. This getResourcesStream method searches for the resource in the class path, which for us is in the bin folder in our projects folder. So if we wanted to load the GUI vertex shader, for example, the file path we would need to put in would be GUIs slash GUI vertex shader .txt. Unfortunately though, if you have a look in your GUI shader class, the file path that we're currently using is source slash GUI slash GUI vertex shader .txt. So we need to remove the source part here, but make sure to leave in that first slash. And unfortunately, this is the same for all of our shaders in the whole project. So you need to go through all of your shader classes and remove the source part of the shader file paths. I've put a list on the screen here of all the shader classes that we've added in this tutorial series, but if you've added any of your own, don't forget to change them as well. Once you've done that, you should be able to go ahead and run the game again, and it should work just the same as always. If you get an error at this point, then check which shader it was trying to load, and fix the file path for that shader. So let's now go ahead and export this to a jar file. To do this, we need to go to File, Export, then choose Java, Jar File, and select the project that you want to export. Use these settings here, choose where you want to save the jar file, and then when you're done, you can click Finish. So that will create a simple jar file that just contains our code, but it doesn't contain the LWJGL libraries or natives, and we have no way of running it. The way that I've always added my libraries to a jar file is using a very nice program called JarSplice, and you'll find a download link for this in the description. This is a really simple program which makes it very easy for us to add natives and jars to our game's jar file, so go ahead and download that, and then run it. The first thing that it will ask you to do is to add some jars, so we need to add all of the necessary jar files for our project. Firstly, we obviously need to add the jar file with our code that we just exported from Eclipse, so find where you saved that and add that in. Next, we need to find the jars for all of the libraries that we're using in the game, so go to wherever you have them stored, which is probably in your project's lib folder, and then add them all in as well. That's all the jars that we need, so next we need to add the relevant natives. So again, go to where you saved the natives and add them in as well. Finally, we just need to tell it the name of the class where our main method is, so that it knows what to run when the jar file runs, and for me, that is engine-tester.maingameloop. So type that in carefully, and then we are done! So we can now go ahead and create our runnable jar file, or if you'd prefer, you can create one of these other file types. Then, just choose where to save it, press save, and then you'll have to wait a little bit, and then hopefully you'll get the success message, and that is it. As I mentioned earlier though, we have to remember to put the res folder into the same folder as the jar file, so copy your res folder from your project, go to wherever you just saved the runnable jar file, and paste the res folder into that folder. And now, you should be able to double click on the runnable jar file, 
and if all has gone well, then it should run the game. If for some reason your game doesn't run, then you must be getting some sort of error, and I would suggest running the jar file from the command line to find out what the error is. To do this, you need to navigate to the correct directory, and then type in java space dash jar space, and then the name of your jar file, and then go ahead and press enter, and any errors will appear here. Another problem that you might come across is that when you try to run the jar file, it opens up your display, but then crashes and creates an error file like this. If you open this up, you can scroll down a bit and find out where the problem is coming from. So for me, it's the font shader, and this only seems to happen on a few computers, but the problem seems to be the smooth step function in the fragment shader. I really have no idea why this causes a problem on some computers, especially as it works fine on those same computers when running the game from Eclipse, but the only way that I've found to fix this is to simply not use SmoothStep, um, so instead you have to use your own SmoothStep function like this, and I'll put a link to this in the description, and then just replace the SmoothStep calls with your own SmoothStep function. Then just do the whole exporting and jar splice thing again, and it should now hopefully work. Again, I have absolutely no idea what's causing that problem or how many computers it actually affects, so if you have any more knowledge about this error and why it's happening, then please do let me know because I would love to understand it. So hopefully you've now got the game running with the resource folder outside the jar file, so the next step is to get it working with the resources inside the jar file. Actually getting the resources into the jar file isn't too tricky. I found that the easiest way to do this is to simply create a new source folder in your Eclipse project called Resources, and then in your project folder, just move your res folder into your resources folder. That way, when you refresh your project in Eclipse, the res folder is automatically added to the bin folder, which is where we need them to be to access them from inside the jar file. When you want to add new resources, always add them to the res folder inside the resources folder, rather than the res folder in the bin folder, because Eclipse will often delete them. Whenever you do add new resources to the resources folder, then you'll have to remember to refresh your project in Eclipse, so that they get copied over to the bin folder before you can use them. To access the resources from inside the jar file, we again need to use the class.getResource as stream method, so anywhere in your code where you're loading resources, you'll need to change the code to work with the getResource as stream method. So let's run the game and see what gives us an error and see what we have to fix. So I'm getting an error here from the old obj loader, so let's fix that first. So we can delete this here, and then the buffered reader now needs to take in an input stream reader. So let's create one of those here, and this needs to take in the input stream, which we can get by calling class.class.getResource as stream. So this file name here is just the name of the obj file without any extension, so the file path will be slash res slash plus file name plus dot obj. We're also going to need to do the same thing in the new obj file loader class, and here we just need to replace all of this with the same thing that we had in the other obj loader. And before I forget, let's do exactly the same thing in the normal maps obj loader class. Let's see what else we have to fix. So we're now getting an error with the texture loading method, and this get texture method here actually takes in an input stream. So here we can simply do class dot class dot get resource as stream, and then put in the file path, which for me is going to be slash res slash plus file name plus dot png. Next up, we need to fix the other texture loading method, which we used for cube maps, and here we just need to use an input stream rather than a file input stream, and then we just need to do the usual thing with the get resource as stream method. And actually, when we call this method, I've been putting in the full file path before, so I'll change that so that it just takes in the file's name. Finally, we've just got the fonts loading to fix, so in the metafile class, in the open file method, this now needs to take in a string, and then we'll do the usual thing to create the buffered reader, and make sure that here the extension is .fnt for the font file. Then we just need to change the constructor so that it takes in a string, 
We'll also have to change that in the text mesh creator constructor as well, and also in the font type constructor. And finally, when creating the font type, we now just need to put in the font's name. So go ahead and run that, and hopefully all of the errors should be gone now. But if not, find where the error is coming from, make sure that you're giving it a valid file by printing out the file path, and then just check that that file path actually exists. So make sure that that file is actually in the right location in the bin folder. So once you've got it working again in Eclipse, then you're ready to export it. So export the jar file in the same way as before, and then do the whole jar splice thing again as well. If you've still got jar splice open from the first time, then you can simply just remove the old code jar and add in the new one. Then just save the finished jar, and you should now hopefully be able to run that on its own without needing any other folders or files. So that is it for this week. Next time we're going to be back to doing OpenGL stuff again, and you can check the description to see which topics are coming up soon. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you all next time.